So let's jump to the second part called acclimatizing. So this is Steve Krug's version. It says, you know, before we like to look, look at the site, I'd like to ask you a few quick questions. And the one of the questions, you'll see this, he kind of talks about network, net, internet usage and stuff like that. Really, this section, you're asking questions, you're not actually re recording all that stuff down. This is really just to acclimatize the user, get them used to the, the rapport between you. So you're asking questions, they're answering questions. So this is where, you know, now that you can get a good velocity later on because you've started that process, they understand the, t the take and the give, right? So every time there's all these nonverbal cues that we're always giving out every time, you know, different people respond at different speeds. This is a great way to acclimatize both you and the subject, you know, so you start to understand because you don't want the first question you want is, and you're like, well, does they, do they respond quickly and not quickly? Um, are they used to the way I phrase things or so on? This is a good kind of play, give and take, okay? So yes, it eats up part of your time, but I think it's a very good use of it. So some tips. Like I said, you want to build rapport with your participants, and this is the section that you, that's easiest to do because in the first one, you were keeping to the script, right? This also ins and assists you on the grade and the curve. In this particular case, uh, Steve Krug's testing websites, so he, he knows a little bit it, when people answer questions about how they use the internet and how often and stuff like that. That helps him later on to use that to grade, grade on the curve part. Personally, I think that first part is the one section I just told you is really about acclimatizing. And I, in this case, it happens a happy coincidence, but maybe not necessary. You might want to change your acclimatizing questions, but I think the main use of this is really getting that relationship started, okay? Because you, potentially you're two strangers, right? And then last one was get the participant talking. So some people obviously are more verbal than others. Uh, some people will jump right away and tell you exactly what's in their mind. Other people need to be mined or distilled like a good whiskey. This is the acclimatizing, but not for you, the relationship. Again, this is the acclimatizing of the user now with the site. So this may be the user with your mobile app or so on and so forth. The idea here is now the user is before they kind of do start to doing stuff like that, you want to get them, I don't say, I would say acclimatized specifically and not necessarily familiar, but the idea is they know where things are, they know you've opened up the site and so on and so forth. But for the version that Steve has here, for example, he says you can look at the site, but you, can, you, can't, you can't click on anything or something like that. So that kind of gives them a kind of good setting for that. Tips, like I said, just gets them used to listening to your instructions too, and you can see how they react to your instructions if you need to make any modifications. Gets them used to verbalizing, and gets some feedback about what they think about the site, and then lastly, it gets them to think aloud. This is sort of really, really important. So the first one, I was saying, okay, well, you, you want to get some rapport, those questions. The second one of acclimatizing, you want them to get into, they say user testing is part therapist, right? The idea is sometimes those things need to be, do they do need to be pulled out of the individual? So you want to get them to be thinking out loud because a lot of times they'll think, but people are not necessarily used to, ver unless they've had training before, to verbalize it. So they might be sitting in front of the screen and they may be not doing anything or they might be thinking or they might, you know, there's other processes going on. So instead of guessing, it's always better to have them verbalize so they can tell you exactly what's going on. It'd be great if we had this magic machine that could look into people's brains, but it's not yet. So the task. So this is the saying, but basically what, he's, what we're doing now is we're going to level set and then we're going to give you three tasks. I'm not going to show you all the tasks because I want to, when I do the live demo, I don't want to kind of give it away. But here are the tips for a task. When in doubt, say nothing. You can't get yourself wrong. So, so you know, this, you know they'll say, so, you know, we don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. Take it another way, like if you're worried about you saying something to color the, the testing or something like that, don't say it. Because once you let the cat out of the bag or Pandora out of the box, it's hard to take it back, okay? So if you have any, any feeling, gut feeling that says, maybe should I, should I, should I say it? Error on the side of don't say it. The next thing is use, <laughs> I don't know how many permutations of these, use every single combination or way of saying, uh-huh, or okay as possible. <laughs> You'll find very quickly that you'll blow through maybe 50 of these during the session, like, or 30 or 50 of them, and okay, okay, okay might get a little boring. So you might want to practice a little bit and great, but the idea is that it's, it's the third point here. You want a somewhat pleased, po positive demeanor. Like not overly positive, but not super negative. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, that type of level. Maybe not without my smirk here, but the idea is that 
you may, you may find once you do this very quickly that, that you're going to go home and you're like, I'm going to thesaurus, OK. <laughs> Seriously. The second last one here is deflect. So what deflection here, I'm not talking about like blame or anything. What I was talking about deflect is that oftentimes they'll, as users, they're confused and they'll start asking you questions. And then at that point, if you answer, we're testing you and not the participant, uh, not subject participant. Uh, in this case, you should be really good or deft at the deflection type of model, where you answer a question with a question. Right? This is probably the best way to put it. So for example, they're saying, OK, well, I can't find this. And then you say, you know, great uh, options are like, um, what would you do if you were at home and I, I, by yourself? Or if I wasn't here? Or you know, what do you think is the best option? Or what would be your number one guess at this? Okay? So that's the deflection. Because really, if you answer, then we're testing you and not the test participant. And the last one is mining nonverbal cues. So this is the one that is one of the soft skills that as you get better at this, you will know when to play this particular card or tool. It's the fact that you know that somebody's pausing for a particular long piece of time, or they go, uh, when they jump to something. Yes, the uh will be recorded, but may not be as useful for the other observers that maybe not have all the information. So what you want to do is say, you know, is that what you expected? Because there could be many reasons why they go, uh, or, or oh. Especially if it's recorded for later on, it's better to do these type of things. Is that what you're expected? And try to be bang on as possible, because that, that adds the clarity right up front when people are watching the broadcast of the video. So it's not like later on where you're debriefing, you're saying, the user went, uh, and I think that, because now you're basically projecting. Okay, So it's really good right in the moment to try to say, catch those little pieces of time where you can visually, because you have all, you're there visually, hey, you know, is that what you expected? Dive into it.